good morning. Welcome to South Liberty's Kids Zone. Our focus group today is ages 13 to 17, but all groups are welcome to participate. Our conversation today is entitled, Meeting the Needs of Others. Our scriptural reference today is Luke 10th chapter, the 25th through the 37th verse. Our facilitator today is Mrs. Renita Wesley. We'll also have our Bible trivia, which with questions from our past teen and children's Bible class, as well as our Sunday school. Our goal today is both to study the Word of God and to have fun doing it. Welcome to Kids Zone. Good morning, South Liberty. Welcome to this week's Kids Zone. This is Vernita Wesley. Today, we will continue our study of inclusive love. Our topic for today is meeting the needs of others. Our scripture text is Luke 10th chapter, 25th through 37th verse. This passage in Luke shares a well-known teaching of Jesus, the parable of the Good Samaritan. This parable is known to many to describe someone doing a good deed for a stranger. So let's look at the story. One day, a certain lawyer came to Jesus and asked, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked him, What is written in the law? The lawyer answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. That is correct, Jesus said. Do this and you shall live. Then the lawyer asked, And who is my neighbor? Jesus answered by telling this story. Once a man was walking on a lonely stretch of road between Jerusalem and Jericho. Suddenly, a gang of thieves jumped out from the side of the road and surrounded him. Give us your money, they demanded. I need my money, he cried. I have to buy food for my family and food for myself. One of the thieves picked up a rock from the side of the road and hit the man in the head. He fell to the ground with a groan. Seeing no one around, the thieves jumped on the man and took everything he had, including all his money and his clothes. One of the thieves picked up a stick and hit the man hard several times, leaving him on the side of the road half dead. After a time, a priest came walking down the road. He saw the man lying on the side of the road and crossed over to the other side and hurried by. Soon, another man came, a Levite. He too saw the wounded man lying in the hot sun, naked and bleeding. He looked down at him and passed on the other side of the road as well. As time went on, someone else was coming down the road. He was a Samaritan riding a donkey. Now, the people of Samaria were hated by the Jews. The Jews felt they were superior to the Samaritans and called them half-breed pagans. The Samaritan didn't care much for the Jews either. They were sworn enemies of each other. But the Samaritan man did not hesitate when he saw the man lying by the side of the road. He didn't stop to think about whether he should help him because of where he was from or what group the man belonged to. He saw that this man needed help and he felt compassion. The Samaritan took healing oil and wine from his bag and cleaned the man's wound and bound him, uh, bound him up with bandages made from the cloth of his own shirt. He covered him with a robe. He gave the man a drink of water and helped the man onto his donkey. He then took the man to an inn and cared for him. He asked the innkeeper to give him what was necessary to care for the man and make him comfortable. The next day, the Samaritan gave money to the innkeeper to pay for the wounded man to stay in the inn until he got better. The Samaritan promised to come back in a few days and pay whatever else was needed to bring the man back to health. When Jesus finished telling the story, he asked the lawyer, which of these three men acted like a neighbor to the man, to the man who had fallen uh, among thieves? The lawyer said, the one who showed kindness. Yes, Jesus said, Go and do likewise. Many of our communities are filled with people representing many different nationalities and religions. It may be tempting to look at those who look, act, or think different from us as outsiders instead of neighbors. 
When things happen to people that are different from us, God expects us to be just as concerned and quick to show mercy as we would toward someone we count as a friend. Jesus shows us that a real neighbor, one worthy of eternal life, is the one who looks beyond differences and shows love and need. The parable of the Good Samaritan teaches us that we should value all people just as God does and that we should show the love of God by showing our, uh, by using our gifts, our skills, our resources to meet the needs of others. How did the Samaritan show that he was worthy of eternal life? First, unlike the priest and the Levite, he didn't see an inconvenience or a problem that should be passed on to somebody else. He saw a man in need of help. We also see that not only did the Samaritan see a man in need of help, he opened his heart and had compassion on him and was moved to action. He used his hands and his own supplies to bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He used his resources, such as his donkey, uh, to take the man to the inn. He didn't just drop him off at the inn and say, hope you feel better, I'm going to pray for you. He used, uh, he used his time from his journey and spent the night caring for the man. He even used more of his resources when he gave the innkeeper two silver coins, which was a lot of money, to pay uh, for the man's continued care, promising to return in a few days and pay any extra that was owed. So as you can see, the point of the parable is not just about doing a good deed. It's about showing perfect, sacrificial, and selfless love, the kind that Jesus has always shown us. So we thank you for joining us today and hope that we share something with you that will help you on your Christian journey. Hello, hello. Welcome to Kids Zone Bible Trivia. And today we have Brianna and Kirsten. All right, let's get started. Question number one. Isaac and Rebecca had two sons. Who were they? Was it A, Cain and Abel, B, Jacob and Esau, or C, Mark and John? B, Jacob and Esau. All right, correct. Number two, Esau was a A, hunter, B, doctor, or C, lawyer? A, hunter. Correct, Kirsten. Number three, Jacob loved to be A, outside, or B, inside his tents? Correct, Kirsten. Number four, Esau was the favorite son of, was it A, Isaac, or B, Rebecca? A, Isaac. Correct. Number five, Jacob was the favorite son of A, Isaac, or B, Rebecca? B, Rebecca. All right, Kirsten. Good job. Number six, Jacob tricked Isaac to get his A, blessing, B, clothes, or C, cars? A, blessing. A, blessings, correct. Number seven, Jacob had A, five sons, B, four sons, or C, 12 sons? C, 12 sons. C, 12 sons, correct. Number eight, Jacob's favorite son was, was it A, Benjamin, B, Reuben, or C, Joseph? C, Joseph. Joseph, that's correct, Kirsten. Number nine, Joseph's brother, A, Loved him, B, sold him, or C, killed him? B, sold him. That's correct, Bree. Number 10, who bought Joseph from the Midianite traders? Was it A, Potator, B, Pharaoh, or C, Noah? A, Potator. All right. Good, Kirsten. Good job. Now, we have a bonus question. Here it is. What are the three R's at South Liberty? Rich, relevant, and reading. Good job, Brianna. Good job. Yes. Now, thank you guys so much for playing Bible trivia with us. All right. Goodbye.